Time for some... Time for some random shop stuff because something is always going on. If you watched my video about three weeks ago where I showed my broken blower and also announced that I will definitely build a new one, you'll probably oh. ask by now where the hell is this blower and the video about it. And I can totally understand this question but the thing with the blower is that... Well, just take a look for yourself. Oh, come on, you didn't really think that I would say something like I couldn't build it because of some reason. Of course I built it. Does it work? Can't tell you. You have to wait. But, of course, there is a impeller inside. It really is almost finished. I just need to make a couple new support brackets for here. Because they need to extend a little further. Because the new blower is a little bigger than the old one. So yeah, the project itself is pretty much done, but the video of it, not so much. Let's just say I have about 100 gigabytes of footage, like 300 plus clips and dozens of pictures for time lapse and stop motion. And well, that takes a little bit of time to edit. But in the meantime, there is more stuff to do here, so let's begin. First of all, something for my camera. Attached to the camera are the microphone and the remote shutter, this one here. And to be able to mount both of these at the same time, I have this extension rail which mounts here to the camera where normally either microphone or remote shutter would attach. But there is a problem with this here. The rail is aluminum and the connection piece is made out of steel, but these knobs to tighten everything are plastic. This one I already replaced with a nut because it was just moving constantly. But the problem there is also that this being a standard 3 8 inch camera thread and this a M10 nut, well it fits but it's not really ideal. But in comparison to this plastic knob here, the nut fits even better. As you can see the threads just don't fit correctly in comparison to a M10 thread. That's how it's supposed to be. And also I can't tighten this enough by hand and I need a wrench and that's also not ideal. But now to get to the point, I'm making some proper ones of these little knobs. <sighs> Therefore I picked up a couple of ones out of steel and right now they have a M6 thread. So what I'm going to do is to enlarge the hole and then cut my own 3 8 thread with a tap. Because it looks cool, let's see the shavings again in slow motion. And like most people do, I start my threads with the drill press. And after a couple turns I have enough guidance to finish it by hand with my homemade tap holder. Okay, this one is too big for my homemade one. But a tab this big isn't really fragile, so I'll use the vice grip. I'm also very slightly chamfering the hole to remove the burr. Now that's nice. Ah, much better. It's also pretty handy as a camera handle, but I primarily need it for the microphone and this guy. Then a very kind viewer sent me an email saying that he has some lathe accessories, actually original accessories from my lathe, and he doesn't need them anymore, so he sent it to me. So what's in the package are three face plates, then another spur center, and one of these. This is an adapter from my current 3 quarter inch 16 TPI to the standard M35 thread. And this is much easier to get accessories for. Unfortunately these face plates only have 4 mounting holes. The one that came with my lathe has already been fixed so now let's fix these ones. I've also started a hole here that acts as a marker so whenever I have to remove the face plate for whatever reason 
and then put it back on, I get the same orientation again. And this is how my hands look now after all that drilling. I don't really have a use for the spur sand at the moment because why would I need two identical ones? But what I want to do with one of them is to put it in the lathe and then grind it to a smaller diameter with an angle grinder also. But I don't have an angle grinder yet, so this will be a project for the future, so somewhere. One comment I get from time to time under my videos is from people saying how smart I am. And I'm actually so smart that I lost the manual of my camera and had to print a new one. It's already printed like a book, so I could just fold it in half and it would be done. But I'll cut all of them in half and try to make it into a more book-like book. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Just cutting all this paper in half, you know, the new manual, because I lost the other one. Uh -huh. I see. Well, um, have fun, I guess. Idiot. Thank you. Now, some of you may ask, why do I even care about the printed manual? Because it's available as an online PDF. And sure, that's true, but for this type of manual, there's no real substitute for a book. And yes, I actually need the manual from time to time because this specific camera, the GH4, has a ton of features and there's no way I can remember all of them. And if I want to shoot more than just average footage, I need to play around with the settings a little bit and I need to look them up in the manual. And as I said, the best way to do that is just with a printed manual. I've lined up all the pages and clamped them together and now I want to try to glue them together with the wood glue. And to help me do that and make the edge a little bit more visually appealing, I made this piece here that fits over all the pages. Like so. And I really don't know if this actually works, but well, let's try. And while the glue on this is drying, I can make some more stuff. So what I want to do here is making a jig to glue up segmented rings using rubber bands. And this jig is not my idea. I saw this on Dennis Edwards' channel. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is, as it's not my idea, I think I need to give credit. I'll also need this jig for a few more projects that I have in mind. And I think I'll keep this little compass stick that I made just for this in about two minutes. But it works really well and could be pretty handy. To show how this jig works, I first need some segments. Okay, I guess you can see that getting a rubber band around this is pretty impossible and it would be even more impossible if there was glue and everything slides around. And now with the jig you can put some nails around the ring and then stretch your rubber band around these nails. Then you can position the ring and apply glue with ease and then remove the nails one by one. A ring that size probably needs more than one rubber band but you can just repeat the thing with the nails. Probably can also add two at a time. And this should be clamped pretty good. I've also made a second one of these plates. And I can use this one to make the ring flat. This was by far the most relaxed ring glue up that I've ever done. And the fact that this being melamine can easily clean it with a wet rag. I should make those circles waterproof though. This is by far easier than hose clamps and I think also better. It probably won't create as much pressure as a hose clamp, but therefore it will create perfectly even pressure. With a hose clamp you have always the problem where the screw is and also, 
it most of the time it moves the segments a little bit around. Here when you only have one rubber band you can still align all the segments and make sure that they are all even and then add more clamping pressure in the form of rubber bands. With the hose clamp that's never that easy. And the rubber bands are also much much cheaper than these. These go for about 3-4 euros per piece. And the rubber bands I bought a whole kilo for about 10 euros on Amazon. And they contain a lot of rubber bands, probably more than I will ever need. After that first string I had another idea what I could add to the jig which is here. On the first string I put all the segments in a row to apply glue to all of them at once. But while spreading the glue they started slipping a little bit so I thought why not clamp them in place somehow. Here I drilled a hole for one of my cam lever clamps which I also have a video about. And to the edge I glued a little fence to line the pieces up and with a series of holes I can clamp this against two nails. This really isn't clamped out just tight enough to prevent them from slipping while spreading the glue. Okay, now also my new camera manual book is dry and this worked pretty well. You can pull on individual pages and they stay where they belong. I just have to trim the edges and, well, I got a tool for that. Let's call it the table saw. Unfortunately, this didn't work as planned. The surface left by this cut was horrible. I tried another blade with less teeth, but that didn't turn out great either. So then I clamped it between two boards and cut it in multiple passes, and that left a very nice surface. Alright, after I figured out how to cut paper this thick on the table saw, it actually worked pretty well. The wooden piece as a backer also works pretty well. I also thought about a piece of cloth to make it more flexible there, but the wood glue also tends to dry out pretty hard and I don't know if that then breaks. This works great, I can read stuff in there, so I think that's a good solution. The only thing I would change if I do it again, I would make the first and last page out of much thicker material. I probably glue the same piece of paper, a thicker piece of paper on top of there to strengthen that a little bit. But I don't know, it also looks kind of like that I'm actually using it a lot. I don't know, I'm happy with that. And that's all for now. Time for time for a little bit of random shop stuff because no. I only have to make a couple new support break pieces. Shit. First of all, where is my phone? Hello. Of course, whenever you search your phone, it's on the disk sender table. Why not? And first of all, something for my camera. No? Hmm. This is a standard camera thread and this is a M10 nut. It fits... Oops.